Hello everyone, today we'll be taking a look at the big 3 tech SKR Pico. big 3 tech SKR Pico is a tiny 3D printer board designed for small 3D printers like uh, Voron Zero. As you can see this is a tiny PCB. I don't have a banana for reference but uh, yeah you can see it from my hand like this is tiny or you know compared to a Raspberry Pi. It also shares the same mounting screw locations as a Raspberry Pi like they I don't think I'll be able to show that very well but they do line up and that is intentional as well because another way of spa saving space with this SKR Pico board is you can stack your Raspberry Pi on top like this and you know save a ton of space that way. The 90 degree JST XH connectors that you can see on the sides uh, enable this so because it makes it easy to plug and unplug uh, JST XH connectors and that is also a very nice touch but there are a few JST XH connectors like these and these that aren't uh, accessible with the Raspberry Pi uh, screwed on top so you know it's not perfect but uh, most of the connectors that you would normally need to reach are available on the sides. It uses the Raspberry Pi RP20, RP2040 as its MCU as you can see here which is uh, I think it's a great choice for a um, controller for this type of PCB it has a ton of GPI opens enabling you know actually building a controller around it it, uh, it is cheap and it is not an Optanium unlike the STM32 chips and uh, that's uh, cheap and not an Optanium is also the reason why I use that on my Kuspa which is also published on the GitHub repository and I also have some uh, videos about that I guess I'll link them in the description below. The SKR Pico has four TMC2209 drivers hidden underneath this heatsink. I have more to say about this in a second but uh, yeah this means you can control four stepper motors through this or if you want to uh, to Z motors in uh, parallel I guess that is possible as well some people do that not really on not really something you'd use on a Voron but it is possible I guess if you want to do wanted to do that but otherwise you have four, uh, four TMC2209s and the way I use it four stepper outputs you can also see that this has a PC motherboard style heatsink on here uh, I guess this you can call this a heat sink in the literal sense because it sinks the heat but uh, it doesn't dissipate the heat that well because you, you can see that this basically has no fins it's just a giant slab of I'm gonna guess aluminium maybe copper but probably aluminium it has some fins here but yeah that's not a lot so it sinks the heat which is uh, enough like drivers shouldn't really overheat anyway and it also creates a shared pool of heat for all drivers which uh, might sound bad but it's also good because likely not all of your drivers are going to overheat at the same time and this dissipates the heat between those so yeah I think uh, this is fine but I prefer to see a real heat sink. This also has a 5 volt back converter built in onto the PCB that's for powering your Raspberry Pi which means you don't need an external 5 volt back converter on your Voron Zero setup or a separate 5 volt power supply or anything like that. There is a 5 volt output here and so you can just run that cable from here to your Raspberry Pi and power your Raspberry Pi using that. Uh, here you also find some UART pins so if you prefer UART communication between your Raspberry Pi and your controller that is also possible and that's also nice for you know space saving because otherwise USB cables you'd have to run one from here to here and USB cables do take up a lot of space so if you are very space limited not this limited on a Voron Zero, but you know, if you if your setup if you're that limited, that's also nice. If you prefer UART communication for whatever other reason, that's also nice. It's always good to have options. I personally prefer USB-C, which is what I'm running on my setup. You can also grab the five volt from other connectors because on a, for example, Voron Zero Point One, you have a five volt hot end fan, and uh, yeah, you can't run twenty four volts to that. And I don't think there is a twenty four volt alternative out there, not at the moment anyway. These are the fan output connectors and these only support 24 volts. There is no fan voltage selector jumper you can configure. So uh, your only option is to have five vol uh, 24 volts outputted from these. So um, that is something to keep in mind. You'll have to connect the ground to one of these fan connectors and you'll need to grab the five volt from some other five volt pin. I'm grabbing mine from the one of these straight JSTXH connectors. But yeah, uh, you'll have to find your old and final volt. That is something to keep in mind. But that's pretty easy thanks to Big3 Tech being open about their design. So you can find a lot of information, including the schematic and whatnot, in the GitHub repository. I guess I'll link that in the description below too. But you can also reference the printed uh, 
wiring pinout diagram that's printed on the box, the inner tray part of the box, which is very nice. I, I really like that. I personally prefer just looking at a physical printed thing rather than trying to reference something electronic. It's a fairly minor thing, but you know, it saved me a few minutes and I did appreciate that. But uh, speaking of the box, also in the box, along with your Victritec SKR Pico, which is normally in an anti-static bag, I just repackaged this. You also find a support card thing with a bunch of QR codes, a squished, uh, derpy looking Victritec duck. I guess that's because this box is kind of small. A bunch of pin jumpers for you know sensor resuming or flashing the clipper to the flash on the PCB, and along with a bunch of M2 and a half screws for mounting the SKR Pico. A USB A to C cable if you prefer USB communication between your Raspberry Pi and the SKR Pico, and a, a SKR Pico to Raspberry Pi cable for uh, A powering Raspberry Pi using the onboard uh, 5 volt buck converter, and also for enabling UART communications if that is what you prefer. One thing to keep in mind is this is basically only really usable if you stack your Raspberry Pi on top like it's intended to because this cable as you can see is very short so if you don't intend to stack your Raspberry Pi on top you will need a longer cable so definitely keep that in mind and here is my testing setup for the SKR Pico on my Voron 0.1 I replaced the Duet Wi-Fi I was using previously with the SKR Pico and yeah I've been fairly happy with it some, one thing that you should probably keep in mind is this boot jumper. So if you want to flash clipper to this, which you might want to do even, you know, even while you're using the 3D printer, if you update clipper, you sometimes have to reflash clipper. You will have to access this boot jumper and jump it. That's the limitation of the RP2040. On the Kuspa, I have this button to do the same thing. I guess there are more space limited on this or something, which is why it's not it's not a button it is fine but either way you will have you will need to access this this so something you should keep in mind and uh, yeah if you have your raspberry pi on top like this that will also block your uh, boot jumper so if you have those stacked like this then uh, yeah uh, that's another thing you will have to remove physically unscrew your raspberry pi to access that boot jumper so uh, another limitation of stacking these on top something to keep in mind I've been using this setup for about a week and yeah I can say that I'm fairly happy with it and uh, I guess it's time for the conclusion of this video. I really like this tiny form factor, I really like the fact that it has a 5 volt buck converter built in even though uh, you can't uh, you know, connect 5 volt fans directly here with a voltage jumper so you, if you have a 5 volt fan or a 5 volt LED whatever you will have to grab your 5 volt from here, so that is a downside, but I still do like the fact that this has the 5 volt buck converter built in. I like that it's possible to stack the Raspberry Pi on top like this. It saves a ton of space, but uh, it can create a bit more headache when it comes to maintaining the 3D printer, because you'll have to access this boot jumper, as I said, or if you have to connect or disconnect cables to these 90 degree ones, or if you want to access these screw terminals, uh, again, you will have to remove the Raspberry Pi, which uh, you know, it can be yeah, a bit of a headache, but if you're that space limited, the fact that this is even possible is definitely nice. So, um, yeah, I, that I think I still see that as a positive. I also like the price of this. This is a fairly cheap uh, 3D printer controller. Both Amazon and AliExpress will be linked in the description below in case you're interested in purchasing one of these. Some of the downsides are this doesn't have a 12 volt buck converter, so if you need that for LEDs or 12 volt fans, which for example, in my setup, I'm using a 12 volt fan to cool the electronics. Uh, you will need an external buck converter, so that is something to keep in mind. But not many people use 12 volt fans, to be fair. So, yeah, I guess it's not as big of a deal for most people. And uh, lastly, the short uh, Raspberry Pi cable. As you can see, I had to make my own. And yeah, uh, that's definitely, I feel like that is the biggest negative of this board. So if you don't want to stack your Raspberry Pi on top, you are very limited. I wish they included a longer cable in the box, but uh, yeah, th they didn't at least uh, with my units. And as you can see, I have two. So uh, full disclosure, I did receive this for free from Big Tree Tech as a review sample. No money exchanged hands and this was for an honest review, which is what this video is. And I ended up purchasing another one for an upcoming build, so stay tuned for that. Uh, it's a tiny ant farm printer and it makes perfect sense for a tiny printer like that. So though I will use more controllers on that, not just this. It has 
what if I remember correctly, nine steppers or something like that. Uh, stay tuned for that. If you are interested in SKR Pico, as I said, there are links in the description below. I hope you found this review video useful. If you did, please leave a like down below and thanks for watching.